With me is the director, writer, and cast of the movie Hero Tomorrow. It is actually an independent superhero film that is premiering tonight at Comic-Con. It's the first film project I've really worked on. I think this is probably the best venue we could have hoped for ever. We are checking out Chris Gore's favorite films from the Comic-Con Film Festival here. Well, let's start with some of the picks. You brought the best of the best. Yes. Well, Hero Tomorrow. The cool thing about this movie really is how ambitious it was on such a low budget. I mean, they made this film in Ohio for dirt money. From the films you've been watching most online, here's our pick. It's from Ohio-based filmmaker and comic book fanatic Ted Sikora. Since premiering at Comic-Con, it's run the festival circuit and hits Montreal's Fantasia Festival in July. I come up with this idea, what would happen if a regular person really tried to become a superhero? Kind of a cross between Spider-Man and Taxi Driver. It's sort of on the surface, very much a typical girl wants boy to make a commitment and get serious about his life and get a real job and grow up. When we finished our script, which took three years to write, that was the same year I was getting married, and there was no attempt to try to plan a wedding and shoot a movie at the same time. So I took that year and just storyboarded. My goal was to do a page a day. By the end of the year, I had 1,500 images. So it's really one of the areas where I feel like I learned filmmaking. Here are Tomorrow Comics. This is Robin speaking. Larry! Who is it? Your jackass friend. Robin was a really tough type. She has to be able to do this range of emotions, and she has to look like she belongs in a comic shop. When I first read the script for Hero Tomorrow, I was actually really impressed with the character Robin because she is such a powerful and dynamic character. There's a lot of levels to her, uh, so I knew as an actress that was going to be a really good challenge. And on camera, she'd be yelling and all frustrated in, the, in character. The camera would stop, and she would just like start cracking up at herself. I was doing a show at Cleveland Public Theater called The Cult, and uh, sitting in the audience one of the evenings was Ted Sikora, and he approached me afterwards and asked me if I'd like to come and read for a feature film. I first met with Perrin, we did a brief read-through, and I remember thinking, wow, this is a very intense person, and just intense eyes, and just very intense presence about him. If we took a misstep with David, the film was over. He had that kind of lanky, wiry, geeky action figure kind of uh, energy. Really beautiful, dread, locky, long hair that you probably would like to run your fingers through it, but I don't know if you can do that with dreadlocks. Where's Obama? Is that it? You know, not Obama. <laughs> Grandpa, where's uh, Ob Obama? No, come on. A, a Rama? What's an Obama? First it was the coyote, and, and then Cobra Man, and what is this? A Pumba? What is this a, a shit? Palma. A Palma. A Palma. A Palma? Well, I never did get it right. Even It was a word I sort of thought I made up. The look of a Palma, just in drawing form, kind of comes from my days as a, you know aspiring comic book artist. The costume had gone through a few changes. A guy who worked with us in Nothing Like Vaudeville came on and kind of really got us sort of the leotard. He got us the, the fur. And then we got another costumer involved. She sort of made the mask. She sewed the fur onto the face. At that point, I think Milo described it as looking a bit like a mummy. So then Perrin actually got the costume and airbrushed some viney, branch-like textures. But then we decided it still needed a little more of a punch. And then Alexandra Underhill was introduced to me. Well, I'm the costume designer of a performance troupe. And comic book heroes or comic book characters are a really easy format or context for me. And it was really simple to, to just kind of concentrate on certain areas to make the overall visual impact a lot stronger. So, for example, we did the knee to the ankle, we did the wrist to the elbow, and then we did across the chest. The dreadlocks, were, that was not written into the character. You know, that was something that kind of grounded a palma literally in the, in the earth. I think any time that I got to actually 
jump around and be this superhero upon them, whether it be jumping out of some rafters, falling through a barn door, running through the woods. It, it left me room to create, to explore, to go back and say, wow, I remember drawing comic books and going through all those images, and man, these are the styles, these are the poses, this is what you do. Ty just called. Some guy in a costume tries to beat him up. What? Do you have Astro City 5? Uh, I was looking for the first appearance of Alter Boy, who later becomes the new confessor. I attended a couple Comic Cons to get a feeling for the different types of costume and makeup, um, maybe attitude that I needed to bring to Robin. I'm not a comic book geek, so I wasn't real familiar with it, but I had worked in bookstores, so. You know, that was a vacant storefront. We had to run a huge truck to get these massive shelves over there. The independent comic book community really rallied around us, and we were able to get a lot of donated posters and books to stock our comic shop. I've always considered Hero Tomorrow sort of the punk rock version of the big budget superhero film. You know, I've seen some of the big uh, superhero things this summer. The effects are extraordinary, and I've enjoyed them, but among the many key things I ask myself as an actor, or I ask my students when they're acting, is to what end? And ultimately, things really interest me if, when I can find the answer to what end, I find a compelling human problem. I think it's a really refreshing take because it's not big budget, it's not all these special effects, it's not all these special powers, it's a real person trying to be a real hero, even if it ends up being ridiculous. I think it's a nice counter to what's going on with the bigger superhero films.